So today we're going to be talking about reforestation slash afforestation. And it's become quite popular, and, and it's become a lot of people's favorite forest carbon project type. And one of the reasons for that is that it's the best way to actually capture carbon from the atmosphere. Avoided deforestation is not sequestering carbon out of the atmosphere, it's just preventing it from going into the atmosphere. And so reforestation projects and IFM projects, they're actually making climate change better as opposed to just uh, preventing it from getting worse. And reforestation projects can have a big impact. I've seen reforestation projects that are sequestering 10, 20, even 25 tons of CO2 per hectare per year. Uh, to put that in context, uh, you'd only need about 400 hectares or 1,000 acres to outdo the world's biggest carbon capture facility. Uh, so nature-based solutions, trees, are genuinely one of the best ways of actually removing carbon from the atmosphere that humans know about today. But there's no way of talking about reforestation projects without talking about how challenging they can be. One of the problems with reforestation projects is that trees grow along an S-curve. It takes several years for the trees to get large enough for them to actually start sequestering carbon. And trees are really sequestering carbon at their maximum kind of during the middle decades of their life. So it can take 10 or even 20 years for a reforestation project to pay off. Beyond that, there are major ecological challenges to planting trees, particularly native trees. Now, reforestation projects require continued support for years. You have to make sure that those trees are going to grow up properly. That's why we can't just plant trees and walk away. One of the biggest challenges for reforestation projects is dealing with competing vegetation. So herbaceous plants like grasses uh, and, and small shrubs like raspberry can easily overgrow saplings that you've planted and, and just kill them. And so the only ways to take care of that is either herbicide, which a lot of people are obviously hesitant about, or mechanical vegetation control, which basically means weed whacking around every single tree that you've planted. Another big challenge for planting native trees in particular is that some of the most valuable trees in an ecosystem uh, are shade tolerant trees. And what I mean by that is that they're trees that live in, in old growth conditions uh, where there's a lot of shade. And so they're designed to grow up in these forests that are already grown uh, and they don't do very well in full sunlight. And so when you plant things like Brazil nuts or sugar maple here in the United States, it can be a real challenge to, to get them to grow up on a cow pasture. So all of these challenges make genuine reforestation projects incredibly expensive. And I would say on average, it costs about $30 to $60 per ton of CO2 to make work. Never mind the de decade of effort that you have to put into them before they start paying off. Nevertheless, even if you are planting trees that aren't native, there are some genuine ecosystem benefits to be had for trees in general. Even eucalyptus plantations will prevent erosion. They'll provide some shelter for wildlife, even if it's not ideal, even if it doesn't cater to all the type and types of wildlife that are out there. They'll also provide some water filtering, some air filtering. Now, one thing that I do want to address are the tree planters out there. There are a lot of people claiming that they're planting 10 million trees. And the problem with those claims is that you really don't know what's going on behind the scenes. How many of those trees are going to survive? How many are intended to survive? How are those trees going to outcompete vegetation? How are they going to maximize light? How are they going to promote shade tolerance? Are they native trees, non-native trees? What about natural regeneration? A couple of these tree planting schemes that I've seen are actually planting trees in areas where the forest would have grown back on its own. If there's natural regeneration occurring, we want to promote that instead of cutting it down just to plant the same trees again. And I've, I've spoken to these folks. They don't need to be planting trees in these areas. They could just let the forest grow back on their own. Uh, but they're planting these trees to make these claims about how many trees they planted, which is, of course, absurd. So because reforestation is so difficult, it's a multi-year process. You need to go back each year and replant areas that didn't survive in the first place. These tree planting schemes really mean almost nothing to me. And that's why forest carbon crediting systems are so important. Because these projects only receive credits after their trees have already grown. These are already successful projects, and you know for certain that they have figured all this stuff out. There's just no telling when you're planting trees how many of them are going to grow and how much carbon they're actually going to sequester. Now, one difficult thing about reforestation projects is that they're credited by, based on the long-term average not based on how much carbon the trees actually sequestered. 
And what I mean by that is that timber harvesting is absolutely allowed on reforestation projects. And a lot of times this is okay. For example, as we said, carbon credits need to sell for between $30 and $60 per ton in order for this to work. They're, they're not selling for anywhere near that right now. So you can kind of offset the cost of having lower cost carbon credits by harvesting some of the timber off the land. And ideally, you're taking that timber and using it to build houses and sequestering that carbon away for a long time. Uh, so many reforestation projects out there are planting trees, clear cutting them after 20 to 30 years, and then replanting trees. And that's kind of OK, but it's also not exactly ideal if you're trying to reforest native landscapes. A lot of the time, timber harvesting is an absolute requirement for planting trees. One way of avoiding competing vegetation from killing your saplings is to plant the trees very densely. And so the trees all grow up very quickly, uh, and they'll shade out the competing vegetation. However, at a certain stage, the trees will start competing with each other rather than putting their energy towards growth. We want them to put their energy towards making more leaves, increasing their photosynthetic capacity, so they can get bigger and bigger and bigger. But if they're just working on competing with each other above and below ground, then in terms of carbon sequestration, the entire forest grinds to a halt. And so it helps if you plant trees this densely to eventually go in and remove something like half of them. The biggest problem that I come across with reforestation projects is one of additionality. Because timber harvesting is allowed, because these projects place absolutely no constraints on normal timber harvesting practices, many of them are eucalyptus plantations that are basically just chopping down the eucalyptus after 15 years for pulp and then replanting them. Because of all this, a lot of the time, timber companies will just do what they normally do and get carbon credits for it. The world's largest timber companies have entire teams devoted to finding new land that's cheap that they can plant. And so there are always places in the world where the macroeconomics favor planting trees instead of growing soy or cattle. What we want to make sure of is that for every reforestation project that we're sponsoring, those trees wouldn't have been planted otherwise. And so, for example, I've come across eucalyptus plantations that are designed for pulp, uh, that are being sponsored by billion dollar timber companies. And for every $70 that they're making on timber, they may only be making $10 on forest carbon credits. And because this is really just a cherry on top for timber companies, they're able to sell these credits for almost nothing. So for less than $10 a ton, even $2 a ton sometimes. And so this has dragged down the prices of all reforestation projects, and they've made it so that genuine reforestation projects are financially impossible to make work unless you're harvesting trees. At the end of the day, in order for this to work, we need to make sure that the additionality makes sense. And so one of the ways that I will check to make sure that these projects are not just business as usual timber operations is I'll look at the satellite view and I'll look for timber plantations that are very similar outside of the project. And so if the project is planting eucalyptus trees and I zoom out and I see a bunch of other eucalyptus plantations that aren't being sponsored by carbon, that's a pretty good indicator that people were planting these trees no matter what. Another thing that I've occasionally come across, only about three times at this point, is sometimes people will cut down native rainforests and then replant trees. Now, most of the protocols don't allow this. I have seen some gold standard projects that do this, and I've seen some projects from other protocols that do this, but just flat out lie about the history of their project. We really do not want to incentivize people chopping down native rainforest and then getting carbon credits for planting the trees. This is obviously sending the wrong thing. It's an ecological disaster, and it's not taking carbon from the atmosphere. Finally, I want to end by saying that most reforestation projects are monocultures. Monocultures are a lot easier to deal with. They don't have to deal with the same types of challenges that we talked about with native trees. And they grow a lot faster most of the time. They sequester a lot more carbon more rapidly. And so a lot of reforestation projects are either pine trees, eucalyptus trees, or teak. Obviously, this doesn't have all the ecological benefits of planting native trees, but they are removing carbon from the atmosphere. And some forest is a lot better than no forest. And so generally, I'm still in favor of projects that are monocultures. It's just if the financial incentives were better, maybe we could be doing a little bit better at, at planting native tree species. Another issue that I've occasionally come across with reforestation projects is, believe it or not, some of them don't actually know where they've planted the trees. And what I mean by this is that some of them are 
mega projects in which they're going to tens of thousands of farms across entire countries and convincing farmers to plant trees. But they don't necessarily keep files on where they planted the trees. And the verification practices doesn't really do a great job of, of making sure that they are accounting for exactly all the trees in the project. So we really need to make sure that we're, we're sponsoring projects that are uh, well organized and have uh, geospatial outlines defining exactly which trees were planted and which trees weren't. So in summary, reforestation projects are tremendously difficult to make work ecologically. Uh, they require years and years of uh, fussing over the trees in order to make sure that they grow, especially if they're native tree species. Right now, they're almost financially impossible. So you need to either be harvesting timber off of them, or you need to have some sort of altruism. You need to have donations backing the projects. Uh, and really, that's going to probably stay the case until these projects are selling for $30 to $60 per ton. One thing that we have to watch out for with reforestation projects is that at least half of them are being sponsored by timber companies that may have been planting these trees to begin with. And so I really have to look out and make sure that these timber plantations are not just common practice for the region. Some other minor problems that I've come across pretty infrequently. Sometimes they've cut down native rainforests in order to plant these trees. Sometimes these projects do actually fail and you have to make sure that they uh, these trees are actually in place. And then sometimes the accounting can be a little wiggly, especially in terms of spatial data sets. Finally, a lot of reforestation plantations are monocultures. That's because they're just easier and they sequester more carbon. Uh, this is kind of okay, but it's also not exactly what we're striving for. So if possible, I do like to support native reforestation efforts as few and far between as they are.